Man, it is crazy to think I've been writing JavaScript for almost three years now. So I actually feel like I kind of know what I'm talking about. Now, this is going to be a quick and useful video. What are the tricks that I use the most often that is on a daily basis that you might not know? If you're already decent at JavaScript, see if you know them all and feel free to add your own tricks in a comment. I'm not here to waste your time, so let's dive into that first trick. Number one is query selector. You've got your web page and you want to select an element. Well, you probably know you can get elements through the DOM API with methods like get element by class name, get element by ID. But if you wanted to, you could forget about these entirely and just use query selector. Query selector works like a CSS selector where you put a dot for a class and a hash for an ID. Now, the best part that you might not know is you can actually select sub elements using query selector, which you can do with class name or ID. So you can use the caret syntax to get all children or the space syntax just to get the direct child. And the variation query selector all gets you all the matches and returns an array of nodes. Trick number two is array methods. More specifically, what array methods are overrated and underrated? Now I'm going to say something a little controversial. The for each function is really, really overrated. On the other hand, the reduce function is really underrated, especially by new developers. Now, I don't think people use reduce as much as they should because they don't understand its full power. Reduce gives you an accumulator and a value in your callback function. But the thing is, the accumulator doesn't have to be a number. You initialize your accumulator here, and it's pretty amazing because you can make it anything, whether that's an object, a string, or an array, or of course a number. This allows you to do things like very easily convert arrays to hash maps or objects. You can build up strings, you can build a different variation of the array, that you were looking at either expanding it or reducing its size and etc in fact reduce is so powerful that it could actually do the job of map sort and filter if you write the right callback function number three let's talk about destructuring which is one of the best parts of javascript a lot of other languages don't have this at all you can pull out one or more properties from an object or array and this is heavily used in frameworks like angular and react or anytime you're importing libraries. You might already know basic object destructuring, pulling a single value out into a variable, but you can also use destructuring as an argument to a function. All right, I bet you knew that too, but did you know you can do nested destructuring, going multiple layers deep into an object? Another cool trick is you can destructure directly after writing an array method. So for example, if you sort an array and want to pull out the first item, you can do that like this. You knew it was coming. Number four relates to promises. Promises are known as asynchronous because they run in the background relative to the code you see written on the screen. The best example is using the fetch method to pull some data from a URL. Now, in many cases, you'll need to run multiple requests or promises. Let's say you need the data from three different URLs. The cool thing about promises is you can treat them like any other object and store them in data structures. So if you had the URLs in an array and wanted to make a promise out of each one of these URLs, well, we could just use the map function. And now we have an array of promises. Now, the question is, when we have multiple promises, do we want them to run at the same time or one after the other? Now, here's where the trick comes in. Running them at the same time is really easy if you use the promise.all function, which will actually be a blocking line. So it'll wait for this line to finish before moving on. And it will give you an array of the results uh, some of which may be failures. So this will also handle your errors for you. So this is a really powerful function. Now, if you want them to run one after the other, you got to be a little bit careful. You can use async await, but keep in mind your awaits have to be inside an async function. That is just write the async keyword before your function definition. On top of that, and I'm sure this has caused so many bugs, you can't actually run await inside an array method. So if you tried to map and then do a wait inside of the map or for each, well, it's not going to work. What you have to do is actually write a for or a for of loop. And only in this structure will the await keyword work when looping over an array. So be very careful. Number five, let's talk about error handling in JavaScript. I'll admit it actually took me a while to understand this. Now, every time an error is thrown, it has to be caught or your program will crash. And it's safe to say you never want your program to crash in production. So for this reason, it's good to get familiar with try catch blocks. If an error is thrown within your try block or importantly any area below so if your try block calls a function which calls a function with calls a function well that'll be included in the try block 
Now your catch block is where you actually handle the error. So you're given the error in an error object, and then you can either print it out or do some different behavior based on that. And you're probably also familiar with the catch on a promise. So you might have a then chain and then a catch block at the very end to catch any errors that might have happened. Now let's admit this looks pretty ugly and our last trick will actually help us clean this up. Now if we do use async await on this code, well we could either throw await in a try catch block or we could put a catch on the end of this await syntax. Now you can see this is far cleaner than what we were trying to do before and in fact it actually looks really nice. So we're combining traditional promise syntax with await. Anyway, that's my five tricks for today. Nothing too mind blowing, but we don't want to shock your coworkers or your future coworkers with anything. And like I said, they're the most used tricks. So these are things that you're going to be using every day if you're a JavaScript developer. So I hope you guys learned something and I will catch you soon for some pretty exciting projects. Later.